Hi everyone, how are you this week? I've been waiting all week to spend this time with you. This is going to be the last story of the Old Testament for us. Are you ready to dive into the Bible? Great! Have you ever seen such unique names like Isaiah, Jeremiah, Hosea, Joel, Amos, and Malachi in the Old Testament? Have you ever wondered what these names mean? These are the names of God's messengers. God spoke through his messengers to his people, and these messengers were called prophets. Today, we will learn what God told his people through the prophets. Let's read the Bible verse together. In the past, God spoke to our ancestors through the prophets many times and in many different ways. And now, in these last days, God has spoken to us through his Son. Hebrews 1, 1 and 2. After the Israelites fully settled in the Promised Land, Israel became a solid country through King David. The temple that David had planned was finally constructed in Jerusalem, on Mount Moriah, the same place where Abraham was prepared to offer his son Isaac. It was completed by David's son, King Solomon. Solomon began his reign by following God and obeying his ways. When he obeyed God, he experienced God's blessing. But somewhere along the way, Solomon stopped guarding his heart and was drawn away from God's ways, and he began to do evil. As a result, after Solomon's death, the nation of Israel divided into two kingdoms, Israel and Judah. And their kings were not always able to lead the people as God pleased. Many of the Israelites worshiped God in the temple, but they also worshiped idols. They continued to go to the temple to worship God, to perform all the ceremonies, and to offer sacrifices. But they did not obey God in their everyday living. The people went through the motions of doing what God said, but their hearts were far from God. God did not accept what they did for him because he could see that they did not mean it in their hearts. He sent prophets to tell the people to repent, to destroy their idols, and to trust only in God. Repent means a change of mind. They should have changed their mind, but they didn't. Isaiah, one of the well-known prophets, warned Israel that God would send the Assyrians to fight against them and capture them if they didn't repent. A prophet Jeremiah also warned the people that God would send the Babylonians to destroy them. Israel did not believe that God would allow their enemies to take their land and make them captives. But when Israel would not believe and repent, God allowed their enemies to fight against them and conquer them. As God had warned them through Isaiah, the Assyrians conquered the northern ten tribes, Israel, and took them away as captives in 721 BC. The two southern tribes of Israel, Judah, also refused to repent. So God allowed the Babylonians to take them away into Babylonian country, just like God had warned them through Jeremiah. The Babylonians tore down and burned the temple of God that King Solomon had built. It was so sad. But God did not give up on his plan to send the Savior, even though most of the people were not interested in his will for them, nor in his promises. Thousands of years had passed since God had given the first promise of the Savior in the Garden of Eden. But God did not forget his promise to send the Savior. Hundreds of years before the Savior came, God told his prophets about the Savior and what would happen to him. 
They wrote these things down in their books, which are now recorded in the Bible. Isaiah said that a special baby would be born in Isaiah 9.6. And Jesus was born in Bethlehem, Luke 2.7. Isaiah wrote that a person in the wilderness would prepare the way for Jesus in Isaiah 40, verse 3. And John 1.23 tells us that John the Baptist lived in the wilderness and prepared the way for Jesus. Isaiah told us of a person who would suffer for our sins, Isaiah 53.5. Jesus suffered and died on the cross for our sins, Luke 23.33. God knows everything before it ever happens. He kept sending his prophets to tell his people, The Savior is coming. Repent and believe the good news. There were some Israelites who believed these messages of his prophets, but most of the Israelites refused to obey the word of God and hated to hear it. They even mistreated, hurt, and killed God's prophets. Besides, there were also false prophets who spoke lies to Israel. They claimed to be the messengers of God, but they were actually the servants of Satan. They kept telling the people that everything will be all right and that God would not punish them. And the people liked to believe it because the false messages made them feel good. To correct them, God allowed the Greek Empire to conquer them. The Greeks took control of the Israelites and taught them to speak the Greek language. God knew that Greek would become a universal language spoken by many people in distant countries. God was going to use the Greek language to spread his word over much of the civilized world. Some of the Old Testament books were now being translated into Greek and the New Testament was eventually written in Greek also. All these processes ended up being used for God's glory to help spread his word. After a time, the Romans overcame the Greeks, and they took control of the land of Israel. Again, in God's sovereignty, Roman rule had its benefits. God allowed the Romans to build many excellent roads linking their huge empire. Later on, God was going to use these roads for people to travel to distant places to tell others about the Savior. In the end, God had established a common language, Greek, and an excellent road system built by the Romans. By doing this, he was making a way for everyone to hear about the long-promised Savior. The prophets were not God's final means of speaking. Rather, they pointed forward to God's final prophet, Jesus. In the past, God spoke to our ancestors through the prophets many times and in many different ways. And now, in these last days, God has spoken to us through his Son. Hebrews 1, 1 and 2. Jesus spoke God's word. Jesus is the word of God. Jesus is the perfect prophet God promised. We must all listen and believe his word. Jesus said, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Although many did not trust God or obey his word, in Israel there were always a small number who believed God's word given through his prophets. They were eagerly waiting for the coming Savior who God had promised. They knew that he would come at the exact time God planned. Let's pray. Dear God, thank you for your son Jesus. We believe Jesus is the word of God. He is the perfect prophet. He is our Savior. Jesus is the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through him. Help us to listen and believe in your word. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Have a good week, and I'll see you next week 
when we start talking about the New Testament. Goodbye!